Hi, and welcome to my guide. Today we're going to be completing the quest Temple of the Eye. The quest requirement is Made in Abyss, and the stat requirement is 10 Runecraft. The only item required is a bucket of water. Recommended items is your best pickaxe, as well as having at least 10 empty inventory slots, and since we don't need to fight anything during this quest, maybe only bring weight reducing clothing, and maybe one energy or stamina potion. For the teleports, I'm going to be bringing along one teleportation method to southeast of Varrock, which could be the Chronicle, a regular Varrock teleport, or using the Rat Pits minigame teleport, and secondly, one teleport back to the quest start here north of El Carrot. You could use the Lumbridge teleport, the Ring of Dueling teleport, or the Amulet of Glory teleport. Where to start this quest exactly is between Lumbridge, the Duel Arena, and El Carrot. There you'll find a small oasis and a quest start. Let's talk to Wizard Person and select option 2 and then 1. What is the wizard doing in El Carrot? And then select option 1 to start the quest. After a little bit of small talk, you mentioned that you've helped the Zamorak Magic Institute, also known as ZMI, in the mini quest Enter the Abyss. As the Order of the Wizards are Ceratominus, she can now blackmail you and ask you to do a little favor. The archaeologist, as Garnia Smith from Desert Treasure 1, found an amulet near the ruins of Fuser, and she bought that for 100 coins. After pressing 1, we now need to find out where this amulet came from, and our Zamorakian acquaintances might be able to help. So after she has given you the Amulet of the Eye, Make your way to the Mage of Zamorak, located southeast of Varrock, south of the magic shop of Aubrey. The closest teleport would probably be the Rat Pits teleport, but I think the Chronicle is just as fast. Once there, let's talk to the Mage of Zamrak and select option 1 that you need help with an amulet. After this conversation is over, we will need to head north to the tea cellar just east of Aubrey's rune shop. The Mage of Zamrak will ask for a strong cup of tea that we can get from that tea cellar. So, just southeast of the bank, let's talk to the tea seller and select option 3, do you have a cup of strong tea? And he will give it to you for free. Once we have that, return to the Mage of Zamorak and hand him over the cup of tea. Let's use the strong cup of tea on the Mage of Zamorak and with this he will help us select option 1 to teleport to the center of the abyss. This is a one-time thing. Next, let's use the Eye Amulet on the Dark Mage. And next, he will spawn six circles around the Abyssal Rift. These will need to be touched in a specific order that is, sadly enough, random for everyone. But since there are only six, I think we can easily brute force this. Simply touch any energy until one lights up. Of course, it's literally the last one. Then after one has lit up, touch another one. If both of them lit up, then touch a third one. If not, touch the first one again and then try another second energy. And hopefully that one will lit up. If not, then do everything over again. Do this until all energies are lit up white. Afterwards, talk to the Dark Mage, and he will give you an Abyssal Incantation. This will need to be translated by Purston, so let's make our way back to Purston by teleporting to Lumbridge, El Carrot, or the Duel Arena, and go back to the Oasis to talk to Purston. Let's use this incantation on Purston, and she theorizes that this amulet came from a place similar to the Abyss. A place that has access to all the rune altars. Then also she dispels the information transmission spell that the Dark Mage has put on the amulet. 
And after the conversation is over, select option 1 for a one-time teleport to the wizard's tower. Once you're there, go to the basement and talk to the Archmage where we've completed the quest, Rune Mysteries. Let's talk to Cedridor and select option 2, I need help with an incantation. And then option 4, after this conversation is over, with just OK thanks. He's a little reluctant to help since the incantation is written on very thin flesh instead of parchment, which is typical for Zemirakians. But first, he wants to check if all the items are safe. Next, go upstairs and go to the middle floor. Go to the wizard Treyborn from the Demon Slayer quest and let's talk to him. Select option 2 that you need his apprentices for the incantations. After this long conversation, we will need to talk to all the three apprentices and they will give us one part of a larger riddle. Just skip through all the three NPCs' conversation until you see a scroll, because the answer to this riddle is the same for everyone. Just talk to all three NPCs. Then return to Wizard Treyborn, select option 2 that you know what the thing about is, and then type in number 11 to solve this puzzle. Now, please note that there are now currently fireworks playing. After the fireworks, we will need to press continue three more times. After that, go back downstairs and let's return to Cedridor. This time, Preston will also appear. Let's talk to any of the two characters and then select option 1 to start the cutscene and then a portal will open up. You, Preston and the apprentices will arrive in an underground Ceredominist's temple, located under the sea south of Mauritania. Everyone will spread out and explore the area. After this cutscene is over, we will need to talk to all of the NPCs to find what they have discovered. The closest one would be Felix, just a bit north. Let's talk to Apprentice Felix, skip through the conversation until you're able to go northwest. Let's go to the western side of the center, they'll find Tamara. Let's talk to Tamara, then afterwards let's go northeast to the northern side. they found Cordelia, let's talk to that apprentice. Then afterwards, just a bit south in the center, let's talk to Person. And talking to Person will trigger a cutscene. The wizards of this temple used the power of both the abyss and the stone called Eye to create portals to the runic altars. Then, Persu will cast a spell, but that will open an abyssal rift, which she gets sucked into. After the cutscene is over, let's continue the conversation with the apprentices, and then a flashing arrow will appear on our minimap. Go south towards it, and there you'll find two red dots on the minimap. Those are both a pickaxe and a chisel. Be sure to pick up that chisel. Also, you'll see on your minimap a pointing arrow. It is basically how to do this tutorial. Be sure to pick up the chisel and then follow the yellow arrows. And do this for at least 5 minutes to complete this quest. Now instead of just following 5 minutes of yellow flashing arrows, I'm going to use this time on showing you how to do the Guardians of the Rift minigame. The only item needed is a good pickaxe. And for the recommended items, just bring whatever you have unlocked. So bring your best weight reducing clothing, your best frog armor, your best essence pouches, 
Maybe you want to bring a rune pouch if you have like a giant or a large pouch with NPC contact runes inside of that rune pouch. Then also, if you play on rune light, then maybe go to the plugin hub and install the Guardians of the Rift helper plugin. If you play on mobile, then use the tap to drop option and having 56 agility will help you mine fragments quite faster. Once this quest is completed and you want to join your very first Guardians of the Rift mass game, then go to any mass world and wait until one game is over. Once you're able to enter the temple, then take first 10 uncharged cells at the northeastern table. Then it is time to mine some fragments. If you have less than 56 agility, then mine some fragments near the workbench until the timer hits about 12 seconds. If you have 56 or higher agility, then go east and climb the rubble. And there you could mine some large guardian remains and mine there until between 25 and 35 seconds remain, depending on the pouches that you currently carry. Once you're done mining, return to the exit and use the western workbench to make essence blocks from the fragments that you've just mined. Fill both your pouches and your inventory with essence blocks. And around the time you are finishing up filling up your inventory with essence blocks, the first two portals will open up and this will start the first game loop. Step number one, go to any of the two open rune portals and there craft some runes, stones and stealths by simply clicking on the altar. Then return to the temple of the eye and click on the guardian in the center of this temple to get rid of the guardian stones. Then go a little bit further north and check all the barriers and look for one that has a health bar. Click on the circle in front of that barrier to gain a little bit more rune crafting experience and get rid of your cell. Next, return south and deposit your runes to your bank using the bird bath next to the workbench. And that is already the first run completed. Now it is simply rinse and repeat. But every 2 minutes and 20 seconds or so, or about one every other inventory, a yellow portal will spawn. If one spawns, then drop everything you're doing and head through that yellow portal. There you'll find huge guardian remains and if you mine these, you will get a full inventory of essence blocks instead of fragments. Fill up your pouches and your inventory with essence blocks and use the teleporter back to the temple. Make some more runes using any of the open portals, then go back to the temple, power up the guardian, power up the barriers, deposit your runes, and then, since we have just used a yellow portal, the next one will spawn in about a minute. So the next inventory will have to be with fragments. Go to the workbench, make a full inventory of essence blocks using fragments, make runes, power up the guardian, power up the barrier, deposit your runes, then, since we have just made a full inventory using fragments, the next inventory should be via essence blocks and the yellow portal should appear anytime soon. If you have time remaining, then maybe mine some individual shards just next to the workbench and wait until the yellow portal spawns. Grab another full inventory of essence blocks, make runes, power of the guardian, power of the barrier, deposit your runes and make another inventory using shards. Now, from time to time, you can also get a talisman from crafting runes. And this thing is only needed if there are no 10 out of 10 guardians currently set up. If there are too few guardians set up, then you could pick up the chisel from the spawn and make a guardian next to the table where you can get uncharged cells. In mass worlds, the guardians are mostly 10 out of 10. And if so, then you can simply drop this talisman. Near the end of the game, the final yellow portal should spawn. First, I would probably suggest you to grab 10 more uncharged cells and then go through that yellow portal. There, simply wait until the next game starts. Once the next game has started, mine a full inventory of essence. And once you've mined a full inventory of essence, head back to the temple and start mining fragments. But this time, until the timer hits zero seconds. And from there, the game loop starts over again. Okay, this is about to end. Use the talisman, the water talisman, on the guardian portal to be able to enter the water runic altar. And then we're basically done once again.
talk to Tamara, then provide the stones to the Guardian first, protect the shield. God damn it, talking to the NPCs all the time. Okay, then... Good thing the NPCs are not in the actual minigame. And that is a completion of the Temple of the Eye mini quest. You are awarded with one quest point, 5000 rune crafting experience, as well as 1800 that we got during this tutorial, access to the Temple of the Eye, and a medium runecraft essence pouch. If you didn't have that in your bank already. This was my guide how to do this mini quest. Now it's time to train some runecrafting. Hit the bell, rate and comment. Okay, thanks, bye.